I grew up with it as a boy, train spotted, travelled on trains on the line, um, and generally had a love of steam. We lived by the trains. My father went to work when one went past, my mother got the, had put the dinner out when another one went past. So I've grown up with it. My mother used to take me to see my, gran my grandfather driving steam trains on the East Coast Main Line when I was young, as in a push chair. For decades, the Great Northern Railway played a vital role in transporting both goods and passengers all over Lincolnshire. But in the 1950s, much of the line had fallen into disrepair, and many of the stations in the county closed for business forever. That made stations such as this one, which remained open, hugely important for people living here in the area, as they were trying to make up for Lincolnshire's lost railways. Mablethorpe. It was a different place 60 years ago, and that was the case for many of Lincolnshire's villages. The railway was a hub, a catalyst for business, a pulling force for people from all over the country. So what changed? Everybody's conditioned to going everywhere by car because it's convenient and you can do it whenever you want rather than waiting for this train that may or may not turn up. But this is part of our history that's in danger of being lost forever. Well, that would have been the case if it wasn't for the railway enthusiasts across the county restoring and preserving this historic line. The biggest project is taking place here, in Ludborough near Louth. The volunteers have been coming in their hundreds. Originally, a gentleman called Barry Herbert, who used to write books about railway ghosts, sent a letter to the Grimsby Telegraph when this was still open as a freight line. And he got together a group of people. This was 1978. And it was over two years before the line finally closed. And they fought to keep it open. We had a lot of opposition in the early days. Uh, British Rail were very uh, uncooperative, shall I say. But in the end, we actually won them over. We managed to buy the land which at that time was all the way from Garden Street Junction in Grimsby to Keddington Road at Louth. There were quite a few critics who said, no, you won't do it, you're all just dreaming, you know, you're all little lads playing at trains. But we've had one or two come back and apologise and say what a good job we've done and they're amazed that we've done it. But it's not all about just keeping the trains running. Bardney Heritage Centre is preserving Lincolnshire's history in a different way. But why? It's magical that the... the, the I would say the new railways, the diesels types, they're wonderful in their own sense, but it just hasn't got the imagination and the feel of the steam. I would have loved if the work wasn't have gone in the first place. I, mean, I think the mistake was, is that they let all the stations go on the track bed. They should have at least kept the track bed. And then if you look at the future, what future have we got on the roads, the full? Then the railways, it's the perfect answer. When in service, this line did more than just serve the people living here in the county. In fact, it was a huge part of the UK's rail network. I think personally it's very important, not only just for Lincolnshire, but the fact that it was where the first ever Great Northern Railway train ran. Not Kings Cross, Doncaster, York, but from Louth to Grimsby on the 1st of March, 1848. But surely, projects as big as these require huge investments of both time and money. But for Olive, it was more than just about raising the funds to do the project. She went one further and bought her own steam engine. My husband and myself, we've got no children, grandchildren, no close relatives. So we thought we may as well enjoy our own money 
doing something we want and helping the railway as well. I mean, they do pay us every time they use our engine. It's not uh, down here simply, uh, you know, as a plaything. Buying a train is one thing, but how do you go about convincing your partner to allow you to go ahead with such an expensive dream? Well, she's as bad as what I am, and we're, we're both as bad. We have been known to travel a few hundred miles just to see a, an engine flash past. And, and that's what it's all about, is the, the smell, the noise, the speed, and you get this huge engine flash past, which, putting all these carriages, it's magical. However, in Bardney, there isn't a steam train in sight. Instead, there's a railway-themed cafe and the village chip shop. But for Barry, this location was just love at first sight. We just drove over the bridge. There's a bridge uh, just by us, which the railway put in many years ago. And we just came across the, the good shed, which is where we live in. It's, uh, the roof uh, fell down one day and collapsed. And then we said, well, it's about time somebody did something with it. So we inquired and then it had been a great two listed building, it, it, it was quite difficult. And we just took it from there. We did the shed and then we thought, right, then we'll do a station. So we did a station and then we thought we'll put a platform up and a canopy up. And, and it, it slowly takes over. And for these projects to keep on going, the volunteers need to be creative and keep pushing the limits of what is possible. We're gradually relaying the track. Um, we're now starting to lay some track towards Louth, having done a lot of uh, modifications and new installations of track at Ludborough. Um, and we're developing that way. And aside from cups of tea and Sunday roasts, the Bardney Heritage Centre also offers an attraction like no other. In fact, it must be one of the quirkiest B&Bs in the country. Well, it's an old railway wagon, and basically, not a carriage, a wagon. So it will have had livestock in. So it's a bit unusual. So what we're trying to do is just recreate the feel of the railways. But the work doesn't stop here. Projects like this need more and more help to keep the engines moving. We need people to do things from cleaning toilets, painting, training to be footplate crew, operating the signal boxes. You name it, we can we you know we can use you somehow. A very, very friendly place with lots and lots of very nice people who, who are all united in a passion for railways and a passion for helping people if you like in that it gives us all great pleasure to actually achieve something, it's job satisfaction. I've been lucky to meet so many people who evidently love what they are doing. But no matter where you go, everybody shares that same passion for restoring Lincolnshire's old railways. We couldn't do it if we went to work, I'll put it that way. <laughs> but we've both been here, this is our 20th season. You see these huge monsters and when you're small and look up and the steam and the smell, the noise, it's incredible. I started off with the old train spotting thing and it's just gone on from there and it became hands on after BR steam had finished and I lost a bit of interest and then when preserve lines started up I started to get interest again. Without the volunteers we wouldn't be here. But all the everything you see we've done from scratch. It really is amazing to think that once this was just a normal part of Lincolnshire life, but now it's something that we can all celebrate and appreciate. But I've only just touched the surface and work will continue to go on way into the future, restoring Lincolnshire's lost railways. Mm -hmm.